Vice President Reagan says new Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev has responded to his invitation for a summit meeting. And some remarkable international cooperation is allowing tons of food to be distributed to starving refugees once it arrives in Ethiopia. For much of the last two seasons, Georgetown University has had the nation's top-ranked college basketball team. Last night in Lexington, Kentucky, the Hoyas were hoping to enter the history books by winning their second straight NCAA title, but Villanova dashed those hopes, winning the final game in a 66-64 upset. Mike there now with the highlights. There you are, Michael. Kathleen, the Villanova Wildcats and overwhelming underdog pulled off one of the great ups history of the game Monday night. And how? Well, first they shot a record 79%, and they turned the memory of a former coach into a fierce determination to dethrone defending national champion Georgetown. Odds makers did the game so lopsided they installed Villanova nine and a half point underdogs, and when Reggie Williams put Georgetown up 20 to 14, it appeared both teams would follow the script. But Villanova chipped away and tied the game at 20, and this basket by Dwayne McClain. And with time winding down in the first half, the Wildcats went into a four-corner stall, waiting for the last shot. And when Aaron Presley connected, it was Villanova up by one at the break. Patrick Ewing, closing out an awesome college career, scored 14 to keep the Hoyas in the game. And Ewing lost his battle in the pivot with Ed Pinkney, who scored 17 and was named the tournament's most valuable player. Nova missed just one shot the entire second half. Harold Jensen put the Cats up for good, 55-54. The teams then traded down the stretch, with Villanova hanging on to win 66-64, touching off a wave of emotion in Lexington, Kentucky. God was with us, and I love my mother and father. I gotta tell them, this is the greatest thing that happened to me. The victory also touched off celebrating in the streets in and around Philadelphia, and on the Villanova campus, where students gathered to toast their team. Villanova made it to the Final Four once before in 1939, coached by Al Severance, who was in Washington for the big game yesterday. Before the game, Severance died. Villanova dedicated its effort to his memory. Charlie? In the talk of the news this morning, Japan has sharp words for a Senate committee's approval of a bill that pushes for the opening of Japanese markets to American goods. Also, General Dynamics insists that it has played fair with the government on defense contracts despite being accused of keeping two sets of books. And modern sailors are preparing to reenact the voyage of some of America's first settlers. This morning for Wednesday, April 3rd, 1985, it's 6 a.m. Now from our Washington News desk, Kathleen Sullivan and Charles Gibson, City in for Steve Bell. Good morning, everyone. Japan is charging this morning that a new bill in the U.S. Senate not only discriminates against Japan, but poses a threat to the entire free trade system. More American products. Our goal here is to open up Japanese markets. That's the goal. Our goal is not to somehow you know, vindicate our manhood by Japan bashing. Sony has told his parliament he made no new proposals to the United States on trade issues. But White House Deputy Press Secretary... No arrests. And here in Atlanta, another protest against companies doing business in South Africa. This in downtown Atlanta. Almost 100 protesters marching outside the Peachtree Plaza Hotel around noon. Opposing the parent company that owns the Peachtree Corporation. Preston also operates several hotels in South Africa. Our troubleshoot. Traders scheduled to leave the hospital Saturday and move to a nearby house. They put it in the stores on Monday, by Tuesday it was gone. One day is on a tip for the We Are The World album to sell 500,000 copies of the certified gold. About $7 of the $10 price tag goes to relief efforts. With the top stories, I'm Mike Allen. At the top of the news this morning, Vietnam has released an American yachtsman after nearly nine months of captivity. Also this morning, President Reagan reportedly will unveil a new peace plan for Nicaragua today as he tries to convince Congress to renew aid to U.S.-backed rebels. 
And in China, the is still in, but designers are now encouraged to be fashionable. was on his way back home today. William Matthews of New York was arrested last year when he accidentally sailed his boat into Vietnamese waters. Matthews was released this morning and placed on a flight to Thailand, and he talked to ABC News during that flight. I think he's all right. I had the... Uh, ...policy there. We're, uh, we're dead in the water. The plan under consideration would call for a ceasefire, withdrawal of all foreign forces, talk... That means that the real problem is not production in his country, but consumption in the United States, saying it's time the administration crack down on the dealers who live here, as well as the banks which launder their cash. Administration officials dismissed the criticism as designed for domestic consumption. Said one official, that inquiry is playing the public opinion at home, and we've got to let him. Deborah Potter, CBS. Thailand and Cambodia, where they have been fighting rebels opposed to the Vietnamese-backed government in Cambodia. A White House debate over U.S. policy in Nicaragua reported... ...with Tilly Wood. Good evening, Monica has the day off. I'm Joe Becker. While the weather is bringing North Georgia both a blessing and a threat tonight, on one hand, the rain is eased with fire danger, but the weather has also brought us a tornado watch. And we have Russ Minshew in the Weather Center right now with an update. Russ? We are very active here in the Weather Center, Terry. As a matter of fact, uh, we're doing just here in Prince of Atlanta, but not in severe weather, with very strong storms are moving in from the west. A tornado watch is in effect right now for portions of extreme northwest Georgia back into Alabama. Please. This that came from a small station not too far from here tonight. Don Hatcher live from our Rome Bureau with that story. Don. Andrea, thousands of radio stations threw their formats right out the window at 10.50 this morning to answer the request of two Rome DJs who wanted to see every station at the same time play We Are The People. It started as a coincidence for Rome DJ Don Briscar and Bob Wolf, who accidentally played We Are the World at the same time on sister radio stations. An idea took hold of this morning as the clock neared 10.50. They knew their wildest dream had come true. For the world's unity... Stations in 25 countries, including more than 6,000, the estimated in the United States, were picking up their hope for world unity at the same time. This has gotten bigger than I had anticipated. I was expecting excellent cooperation worldwide, especially with the agencies we have contacted. If I could go back three and a half years and forget the damages and forget any of this and have the job and start over, I would be more satisfied than I am now. The award verdict finds the city liable for $61,000 in back pay, $115,000 for mental stress. The victory, the jury singled out Mayor Andrew Young for $12,000 in damages. Chief Administrative Officer Shirley Frank.